Number 10, Man Spider. Man Spider is a version of Peter who ended up mutating and having multiple arms from the main continuity. It was a pretty freaky time in Peter's life and happened after Spider Man tried to create a cure to get rid of his abilities and return him to his normal, old, depowered self. Unfortunately for Peter, this definitely did not work as planned and instead just left him with four arms instead of two. Basically, the opposite of the desired effect, leaving him more freaky than normal, which was kind of what he was going for. There is a version of the four arms. Armed Spider Man, who actually ended up keeping the arms instead of getting rid of them. And he hails from the reality of Earth 1298 and is known as Man Spider, obviously. I'm guessing that having a secret identity would be pretty tricky for someone like Man Spider. Number 9, Savage Spider Man. Savage Spider Man had an upbringing among monsters, and for that reason can be considered uh, kind of monstrous. His appearance isn't super monstrous, although he does share his editorial name with a series that seems to feature a pretty frightening looking mainstream. Savage Spider-Man, which we may or may not talk about later. Savage Spider-Man of Earth 83043 ended up getting his powers from growing up in the Savage Lands. His story is that he was lost there after the plane he was on with his parents crashed. His parents died in the crash, but young Peter survived and was taken in by the giant spiders of Savage Land, whose toxic bites helped him to build up both an immunity to toxins and also granted him spider-like superpowers. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you haven't already, please head on over to Facebook where you can follow us there as well. It really does help us out here and it helps us out there. So yeah, just help us out. And also thanks for doing that. If you've already done that, you're like, I get it, Amanda. You say it every time. Just wanna make sure you know. Number 8, Scarlet Spider. Kane was one of the clones of Peter Parker that we got to know in the Clone Saga. He typically goes by the mantle of Scarlet Spider now, which at one point was actually used by another Peter clone, Ben Riley. Initially in the comics, Kane was presented more as a villain, or at least a misunderstood villain. He misunderstood hero. He wasn't really completely a straight up villain, but he did some shady things. He was a clone that was basically defective, and as a result, his degeneration messed with his mind. He also came with the mark of Cain, which was pretty monstrous, which allowed him to seemingly burn the skin of those he touched, typically leaving his mark of Cain on their face. In reality, this was just a variation of Spider-Man's wall crawl power, as when Spider-Man crawls on walls, this is because of little hook hairs basically in his hands and feet, which allow him to stick. See the Sam Raimi movies for that in person. Similar deal for Kane, but he was using this to basically melt people's faces at the time. Number seven, Maestro. Okay. Imagine a version of the Hulk with twice his strength who retains the intelligence of Bruce Banner. Now, take that Hulk and make him a ruthless, tyrannical ruler, power hungry and evil. And you get Maestro. Our Hulk first comes into contact with him when Rick Jones' daughter takes him into the future to fight his evil future self. But this Maestro easily overpowers the Hulk. In their very first fight, Maestro went to town on the Hulk and won by simply snapping Hulk's neck. That's it. Game over, man! Game over! He then waited for Hulk to heal, taunting him and villain monologuing at him the whole time about all the terrible things they go through as the Hulk, trying to get Hulk to join his side. The only way our Hulk could win was to bring Maestro back in time to when they gained their abilities, the Gamma Bomb, which destroyed Maestro on an atomic scale. The sheer idea of Hulk becoming Maestro haunted Bruce and Hulk's thoughts for the rest of time. Number 6, Mainstream Savage Spider-Man. Mainstream Savage Spider-Man comes from his own self-titled series which spins out of non-stop Spider-Man. So if you wanted to read Savage Spider-Man, I'd recommend going back and reading that first. I think it's only like five issues, so it's also not too long. This story, I believe, is part of the mainstream continuity, so technically, the Peter Parker that we see here, in the, his monstrous form, is in fact Earth 616 Peter Parker. In the non-stop Spider-Man series, there was even mention of the Beyond Corporation, which also helped me to really cement this, at least in my mind, as part of the main continuity canon. I mean, I saw it was kind of listed as that, but... I was skeptical and then I saw that and I was like, nah, no, it's probably main continuity. I think we can definitely say it's main continuity. So hopefully I am right and not wrong about that. But while this is technically 616, it's also a very specific look and time in Peter's life. Like back when he had those four arms, which we kind of touched on earlier. So I figured I could count it for the purpose of this list. It's also where our thumbnail for this video will likely come from. So I thought it might be cool to explain it if you're like, hey, well, what's that thing? That's Savage Spider-Man. Savage Spider-Man is Earth 616 Peter Parker mutated by the drug known as A+, which typically improves performance at the cost of intelligence for most users. However, for Spider-Man, due to his unique physiology, it also turned him into a kind of like part man, 
part spider monster hybrid thing. Poor Peter. At number five, we've got Bizarro. The first time the world sees Bizarro is in Superboy issue number 68 in October 1958. Bizarro is created when Superman is hit with a duplicate ray, and what is left is a gray skinned, opposite version of Superman. Originally from Hertre, that's Earth backwards, yes. Bizarro and other subsequent hero opposites are under the impression that good deeds are actually against the law. But in a newer interpretation of Bizarro, he's not much of a threat to Superman, or anyone else for that matter. In the 2017 publication, he's known as sort of a a goofy monstrosity that even Clark Kent isn't concerned about. The S on his chest is backwards, he has a little chupacabra as a pet named Colin, and he has horrendous grammar. If you tell him to go right, he'll go lefty ways, and if you ask him to stop, he'll go start start. Basically, everyone around him sees him as a big handful and not much more, which is good because he's still a powerful being from another planet. Number 4. Patton Parnell Patton Parnell is one of the vilest alternates of Spider-Man around. He shows up during our exploration of the Spider-Verse where we learn that he is a fairly sadistic alternate of Peter Parker whose hobbies include things like burning ants with a magnifying glass on hot sunny days and spying on his neighbor whom he's kinda obsessed with, Sarah Jane. Patton of course is likely twisted in part because it is heavily implied that his uncle mistreats him. He is bitten by a spider but instead of gaining miraculous abilities that all in all make him a more responsible person and a hero, he becomes a spider-like creature mutating and becoming more monstrous and murderous, both inside and out. Yikes. Number 3. Skulk The Amalgam comics in the 90s brought the fans one of the things they always wish they had. The heroes of the DC Universe and the Marvel Universe coming together. It saw the heroes facing each other. But it also, more interestingly, saw mashed together versions of characters. It's how we got the Batman Wolverine hybrid Dark Claw, who is awesome. But it's also how we got Skulk. Skulk was the combination of Solomon Grundy and the Hulk. Bruce Banner was minding his own business, conducting gamma bond tests in the desert, the kind of thing you do on your perfect Sunday. And then Solomon Grundy appeared. Bruce tried to save the superhuman zombie from the explosion, but the bomb fused the two together forming Skulk. Skulk was really just Solomon Grundy but with the Hulk's iconic purple pants. But I feel like the powers of these two characters fused together should be way more awesome than this. Number 2. Matt Gargan Matt Gargan is known as the Spider-Man villain Scorpion, but at one point he too became an alternate version of Spider-Man. Albeit a really messed up and twisted version as he served as Spider-Man for Norman Osborn's Dark Avengers, which is primarily made up of villains posing as heroic counterparts. In Matt's case, the heroic mantle he was made to fill in for was Spider-Man. Although he wasn't so much Spider-Man, but kind of like an alternate Venom posing as Spider-Man. His suit was made of the symbiotic being known as Venom, who was merged with him at the time. And was also like, really juiced. <laughs> but Norman fixed it so that he wouldn't appear as juiced. He still kind of got like a little giant. <laughs> he got a little giant <laughs> when it came to uh, him attacking people though. This often turned Matt Gargan Spider-Man into a horrifying monster who threatened to, and often actually did, devour those people who stood in his way. Even sometimes almost eating his own teammate, which obviously they did not like. <laughs> Number 1. I Apex I Apex is known in Marvel Comics as I Apex the Decapitator, and was once worshipped as a god in Peru. Remember how we talked about Man Spider earlier? I Apex is like a more terrifying version of that being. He is typically known as having pointed teeth, snakes for hair with multiple arms, and his lower half being the hairy body and legs of a spider. He ended up getting recruited to Norman Osborn's Dark Avengers to act as their Spider-Man after Matt Gargan was Spider-Man, because this was a different version of Spider-Man, a different version of the Dark Avengers, after Norman Osborn escaped the Wrath the second time, this time successfully, and then attempted to resurrect Hammer and bring back the Dark Avengers. I Apex was made to look more humanoid, more like Spider-Man with a genetic formula, except for the fact that, you know, he had four arms still, so almost like Spider-Man, like, but not quite. Later on, he would also be coerced into serving on Luke Cage's Dark Avengers, which were kind of like DC's Suicide Squad at the time. Number 10. Claw. Claw, which is Hulk backwards, is basically what happens when the Hulk goes Hulk. He is another one of the evil personalities inside Bruce Banner's head. This version of Hulk has black skin with these rad glowing red scars. He has red demonic eyes, white hair, and big old talons. Claw emerges when Hulk reaches a sufficient level of rage, which 
It's strange because regular Hulk has gotten way more powerful than this version of Hulk. The Kalev personality is usually suppressed and has only shown up a few times, and not for very long I might add. He appeared first in the Axis storyline where heroes and villains had their morality switched. Hulk isn't exactly always a perfect dude. He will go on rampages and hurt people, he doesn't intend to. Over time, he has been able to hone his rampages into one target, or even not rampage like that at all. But since Claw is his opposite, he lets his rage hurt and maim everyone, putting even the villains on alert. It looks terrifyingly awesome and no one is safe from his rage. Number 9, Infernal Hulk. On Earth 11638, Bruce Banner was officially completely done with dealing with the unpredictability and rage of the Hulk. So, when Spider-Man introduced Bruce to Stephen Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme, Banner became his apprentice, and after lots of training in the mystic arts, learned how to separate himself from the Hulk entity. He did this by sending it to hell and making it a demon. And this was a great solution, until the 616 Hulk along with Deadpool and Spider-Man came to Earth 11638. The Infernal Hulk managed to enter back into the realm of Earth, swapping places with 616 Banner's Hulk persona. Infernal Hulk went after the new Sorcerer Supreme, Bruce Banner, who was saved by both Deadpool and Spider-Man. So, how did they defeat this demon Hulk? Well. Sorcerer Bruce reversed the banishing spell that sent Hulk to hell, and just before Infernal Hulk could return to his original Bruce Banner body, Bruce had his neck snapped, killing him. But his spirit lived on in the astral plane, so it's all good. Number 8, Marvel Apes. Marvel Apes is, well, I mean it's all the Marvel characters as apes. It's pretty self explanatory actually. After Marvel Zombies, which I'm sure you're tired of hearing about, Marvel wanted another cool and weird alternate universe. So we got this. I actually really like it, but I'm a sucker for alternate worlds. Like the regular Hulk, this ape Hulk was a big green monstrosity. He resembled a big gorilla and he was obviously furry. So that's like the main difference. He was still the strongest ape out there and extremely prone to smashing things whenever he got upset. This ape Hulk helped in the battle against the vampiric ape Avengers and would later join a group dubbed the Prime 8, led by Nick Fury. Hulk smash, like, and subscribe button! Arg! Hulk angry, but Hulk still love nerds! Arg! Puny Adam, get on with video! Okay, at number 7, Feral Man of Steel. This isn't really a version of Superman that is fundamentally changed into a monster. He's still a man, and he's still Superman. Except, he's been raised by a pack of wolves in the jungle. In Superman Annual number 6, a DC Comics Elseworlds special tells the story of Kal El. Kel El. Kel El it's spelled K L L this time. A version of Kal El where his ship actually crashes deep in the Indian jungle. There he's adopted by Mer Merar. It's, it's just M, R, and R. Basically, she's a she wolf and she raises Superman as one of her own. But of course, this leaves this version of Superman as a silent type. A wolf man who is on the verge of being entirely feral. However, deep down, the good values of the Superman we all know are demonstrated when he actually spares the life of an adventurer who kills his wolf mother and one of her cubs. Basically, feral Superman is integrated into human civilization and given the name of Clark, continuing on as a version of Superman closer to the one we're used to. Number 6. Null, Breaker of Worlds. When Kal Borsun, known as the Serpent, who was the villainous brother of Odin, sent down seven magical hammers to Earth that represented his seven followers, the hammer Null found its way to our hulking mass of green, transforming him into Null. Breaker of Worlds. Null went rampaging all over South America, bringing him into conflict with the Avengers, who he defeated and eventually into a fight with Thor. When fighting Thor, Null teamed up with Angrier, Breaker of Souls, which was the Thing who also got one of these hammers, who was defeated by Thor. But we all know who the strongest Avenger is, don't we? Null was just a bit too powerful for Thor, and instead of phasing him one on one, the God of Thunder threw Hulk into orbit. He landed in Transylvania and started taking on Dracula and his minions. It was only after Inca, disguised as Betty Ross, showed up that Hulk threw the hammer aside and left to go be in solitude for being used. Yet again. Number 5, Spider's Man. Spider's Man is definitely one of the creepiest ideas for an alternate Spider-Man that we've seen in 
maybe ever. <laughs> this version of Peter Parker was actually consumed by spiders, but his consciousness was also absorbed by them. So while physically he's gone, mentally he kind of like lives on in them. He's literally a Spider-Man made of spiders. Hence the name Spiders Man. He has a tragic backstory, but don't feel too bad for him. He also would be the one to team up with a Norman Osborn version of Spider-Man, plotting to betray the rest of the spider army that he had been recruited to. And he also, as a bunch of spiders, seems to enjoy uh, kind of eating people, a taste he developed as time went on. Number four, Hulk Venom. And what if, number four, what if the alien costume had possessed Spider-Man? Spider-Man is unable to get rid of the Venom symbiote suit and he enlists aid from other heroes. Hulk just happens to be one of the first to show up and the symbiote takes an instant liking to Hulk, which kind of makes me wonder why this hasn't happened before, honestly. It easily bonds to Hulk, overpowering his weak mind. So now you have all the powers of Hulk plus the powers of Spider-Man, which is an interesting idea, truth be told. At number three, we have Super Demon, or Etragon. This demonic version of the Man of Steel is known as one of the many Supermen of the Dark Multiverse. His origin begins when he's rocketed to an Earth of eternal twilight from a dark planet called Camelot. Luckily, this thing still fights against evil despite his monstrous appearance. At one point, he faces off against Vampire Ultraman, who I previously mentioned on the list, and he's eventually targeted by Prophecy, who wants to steal Etrigan's powers from him. But he's able to escape with the help of Justice Incarnate and goes off to try and free the other Supermen in the Dark Multiverse. This guy has basically every power that Superman has, except augmented just a little bit, and often calling on fire as the element of choice. He's got fire breath, hellfire vision, and when he recites a magical verse, is able to unleash what is only described as a burst of hellfire upon his enemies. Number two, Ultimate Hulk. Yes, the Ultimate Universe's version of Hulk is similar to the regular Hulk, but his personality? Nah, -uh, honey, it is whack. Bruce Banner, no matter where you find him, is an emotionally scarred dude. It's why he is the way he is, but the ultimate Bruce Banner? He is selfish, self-absorbed, and just creepy. He was so desperate to be noticed and recognized, he willingly injected himself with an experimental version of a new super soldier formula, turning him into a monstrous version of the Hulk. This Hulk had little to no regard for human life and collateral damage. He even ate people, it was nuts. Ultimate Hulk would join up with Maker, Quicksilver, Kang, and a mind-controlled human torch to make up the team known as the Dark Ultimates. He would eventually align himself to be a, a bit better, but not by much. Number one, Guilt Hulk. The Guilt Hulk is very similar to Devil Hulk, who represents his anger. Only this version of Hulk represents all the guilt and regret that the Hulk feels for all the horrible things he has inadvertently done while in his Hulk form, as well as the horrible things done to him as Bruce, like being shunned and feared and all the horrible things that were done to him by his father. Brian Banner, which is a huge reason behind Bruce having multiple personality disorder in the first place. Because this persona represents all these things, it's actually more powerful than the Devil Hulk persona. Guilt Hulk even took on the form of Bruce's father inside his head before becoming his true form, which is like a weird xenomorph looking Hulk. This Hulk is incredibly powerful, and it took the combined efforts of many of Bruce's other alter egos to hold and keep the other Guilt Hulk persona repressed deep in Bruce's mind. At number 10, we have Vampire Ultraman. This is a double alternate of Superman because he's already Ultraman, who's considered to be a dark, evil version of the hero we all know and love, but after Batman turns Ultraman into a vampire, the character just delves that much deeper into the uncanny. As if a Superman alternative gone bad isn't enough to handle on its own, this guy has a thirst for blood and takes every chance he can get to recruit more superpowered beings into his Justice League of Vampires. This is a perfect example of how messy, but also really fun, things can get when the multiverse gets involved. I think it's fair to say that Earth 43 is not a place I'd like to visit anytime soon. Okay, at number nine, we have Parallax Superman. Parallax is an evil entity that lives in the Yellow Lantern's central power battery, and he is described as the living embodiment of fear. Basically, this insect-like creature is something of a parasite that takes over a number of hosts throughout various storylines in the comics. One of those times, he takes over Superman, and the combination of these two beings naturally creates a very evil and powerful monster. And what makes it even crazier is that the origin of Parallax Superman came about by Superman's own will. 
In defense of a group of helpless school children, classic, Superman decides to give in to the evil parasite and allow it to steal his essence. The only way Superman is able to yield parallax from his body is by shedding all his fears and, using Thal Sinestro's ring, capturing and banishing parallax forever. Phew. At number 8, we've got Vampire Superman from World's Finest, issue number 249. This version of the hero only appears for a short time in this one issue when Batman and Phantom Stranger are out at sea on a ship with a small crew. What appears to be going on is a vampire Superman trying to turn the crewmates into fellow vampires themselves. So when Batman shines a light on Vampire Superman, sending him inside and into a coma. I don't really get why this happens, but basically Batman then attempts to drive a stake into Superman's heart, as one does if they're trying to kill a vampire. But Phantom Stranger stops him and turns the stake on the crewmates, who he reveals as being the real culprits. And for some strange, complicated reason, Superman then comes to and the crewmates are defeated and turned to coral. I don't know, this story was hard to follow, but for a time there, Superman fell victim to vampirism. And this is a scary moment because besides kryptonite, many people aren't aware that another of his weaknesses is magical enchantment, including vampirism and werewolfism. Is that, a, is that the right term? Man, werewolfism? Number 7, Ghost Spider. Not to be confused with the other Ghost Spider, Gwen Stacy vs. 65, this Ghost Spider is an alternate version of Peter Parker from Earth 11638. In this reality, Uncle Ben did not die and was there to help mentor Peter Parker as he continued on on his journey as a hero. Peter here became not just a celebrity and an icon as a superhero, but was also a successful business owner and a philanthropist. However, in secret, he and Ben were working together to lure other Spider Men from other realities to their world so that they could zap them of their power, killing them in the process in order to bolster Earth 11638 Spider Man, transferring their powers to him and making him stronger. In the end, Spider Man of Earth 616, who fell into this trap, helped Earth 11638 Peter Parker to see the error of his ways. Having a change of heart, this version of Spider Man sacrificed himself to save 616 Peter, ending up in a coma as a result. He was returned to life by an alternate Sorcerer Supreme who needed his help, and then came back as the Ghost Spider, who kind of looks like a blue flame ghost rider. At number 6, we've got Werewolf Superman. In Superman Volume 1, Issue 422, we see a cover that makes us jump for a second, thinking that our beloved Clark Kent has been overtaken by a werewolf curse. But no, this isn't actually Superman turned werewolf. What it is, though, is a werewolf who takes Superman's costume off of him and wears it. He wears it around for a while. So, for a moment, we get a pretty crazy visual of a drooling, feral wolf man wearing the Superman suit. And we're also left with another visual of a totally naked Clark Kent lying defeated on the floor. But that's neither here nor there. What's crazy about this encounter is that this werewolf actually takes out Superman, knocking him down for long enough that he's actually able to steal the costume, forcing Superman to throw on a pretty sweet one-piece tracksuit and fly somewhere that he can properly change back into his Clark clothes. Later, he finds the culprits of the werewolf serum and then takes them all out naturally, without getting bitten himself, luckily. Number 5, Hulk 2099. Most of us comic book fans know about Spider-Man 2099. It's an incredible story and character, and it was crazy successful. Because of this, Marvel wanted to capitalize, like you do, and they made more 2099 versions of their characters. One such character was Hulk. This version of the Hulk is actually a guy named John Eisenhart. John didn't get his powers after being a scientist though. In the world of 2099, there was a cult known as the Knights of Banner, which to sidetrack for a second is a pretty sweet name. But anyways, John was a studio executive and the Knights of Banner wanted to create another Hulk while also making a movie about their cult's history. Yeah, it's weird, I don't know. Eisenhart joins the cult and gets caught in a gamma explosion, turning him into the Hulk. He was a bit different though. For starters, he is terrifying, but he could control his rage, meaning his strength didn't grow indefinitely. He also has claws that can slice through most materials, and his freaky elongated tongue is super strong, which is weird. At number four is the Superman Monster. This is a classic mashup story, basically marrying Superman and Frankenstein into one. A guy named Victor Luther comes across an alien spacecraft with the remains of a baby boy within it. When he realizes that the child was supposed to have arrived intact, he devises a plan to revive the being using the body parts of dead bodies found in a local graveyard. Using the advanced alien technology from the ship, Luther creates a revival matrix and brings this monstrous version of Superman 
to life. But just like the classic story goes, the resulting creature doesn't quite turn out the way that Luther had planned. He's a little grayer and more decayed than he'd like, so Luther rejects him. And gets pretty badly injured in the process. The rest of the story is basically more parallels to Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, so if you're interested in hearing about the story of Superman and Frankenstein mashed together, go check out the story. It's a one-off, so it probably wouldn't take very long to read. Number 3. Poison Poison is an alternate version of Peter Parker inspired by the Spider-Man story, The Other. He hails from a what if where we explore the idea of what would have happened had Spider-Man rejected his connection to the spider within and rejected instead of embracing his role as a spider totem. This would have left Peter vulnerable basically to outside attack. Trapped within his cocoon with no way out, the symbiotic being that we often refer to as Venom sensed Peter's vulnerability and saw a chance to merge with him. Venom then leaves his current host, Matt Gargan, to forcibly connect with Peter, and together they become Poison. Poison is horrifying and attempts to recruit Mary Jane as his partner, but after she rejects him, he believes that the corpse of Gwen Stacy will suit him better. Oh dear. At number 2 is Sand Superman. This entity is neither human or Kryptonian alien, but a mixture of energy from Quorm, sand from Earth, and some of Superman's powers that have been siphoned out of him. This creation is not quite a monster, but it is an uncanny recreation of the hero that honestly kind of creeps me out. Almost as much as a zombie or vampire version of Superman might. It doesn't have any soul inside of it, and for a time is set on draining even more of Superman's powers from him. Although it does come around and start to act more like Superman does, acting as a selfless superhero, fighting crime, and all that. It still poses a threat to Superman, and the rest of the world for that matter, because due to this creature being composed of alternately charged atoms to Superman, and only gains power when Superman loses it, and vice versa, it's known that if Sand Superman comes in contact with real Superman, there would be a devastating explosion powerful enough to destroy the planet. So yeah, Sand Superman, not to be messed with. And kind of creepy, honestly. Okay, we're at number one, and I have to put Blackest Night Superman here. Two words, Zombie Superman. This version of Superman comes back from the dead and terrorizes Smallville with the added powers of a Black Lantern. In the comics, he's able to read people's fear and their power levels with what seems like a built-in HUD system. He's just a predator in all senses of the word. But when they face off, Zombie Superman is able to see more human emotions in Superman than he had in the people of Smallville. Fear, love, hope, will, and on top of it all, this zombie Superman uses Superman's own mother against him, putting her life in peril, and even Clark's dog, which is where I personally draw the line. Thank God he and Superboy put an end to this undead nightmare at the end of the series. The pup also gets some blows in, which is a great little touch. Music